J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with We Did It Before and We Can Do It Again. We did it before, and we can do it again from the Broadway show Banjo Eyes, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who gave a big party last Thursday at his home in Beverly Hills. A host whose Christmas dinner was the greatest thing since Harper's Bazaar Diet, Jack Benny. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's hello again. This is Jack Benny talking, and Don... For a man who ate 15 stalks of celery, and heaven knows how many when I wasn't looking, you're a fine one to complain. But after all, Jack, that's all there was to eat. Celery and ham hocks. <laughs> ham hocks? I had turkey. You had ham hocks. Sticking that feather duster in them didn't fool anybody. <laughs> Look, it, it fooled Dennis because he asked for the breast. <laughs> anyway, Don, ham hocks are marvelous. I'm crazy about them. Well, I'm glad of that because my wife says the next time you come to our house, that's all you're going to get. Well, that's the cheapest thing I ever heard of. <laughs> You've got a backyard full of chicken. <laughs> anyway, Don, regardless of what you say, my party was a success. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Say, Jack, you notice anything new today? Well, let's see. Are you wearing a new dress? No. New shoes? No. New pocketbook? No. Well, I give up. What's new about you? I'm wearing that lousy mascara you gave me for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> now, just a minute, young lady. In that gorgeous hand-painted gift box, you also found a lipstick and talcum powder and bath salt <laughs> and a beautiful pink and white washcloth. The washcloth I already returned to the Ambassador Hotel. <laughs> That didn't come from the hotel. It was made by the Ambassador Knitting Mill. Read before you return. <laughs> Speaking of Christmas presents, I've got a good notion to tell Don what you gave me. What was it, Jack? A lot of thought she put into it. Well, it was useful. You've got to admit that. Sure, useful. Well, what was it, Jack? What did Mary give you for Christmas? A nutcracker for coconut. <laughs> so big, I can't even lift it. Well, I was going to get your muscles, but I didn't know where to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Mary. You can take that present you gave me right back to the May Company. First thing in the morning. You take it. Every time I go there, I forget and punch the clock. <laughs> All right, I'll take it back myself. But the next time... Hey, it... look at Dennis. What's the matter with him? Where? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. <laughs> well... What's the matter with you? Just ask me how my girl is. Go ahead, ask me. <laughs> All right, Dennis, how's your girl? She can go sit on a tack. <laughs> What's this all about? What's wrong between you and your girl? Well, I gave her some beautiful earrings for Christmas, and just because I swallowed one, she slapped me. <laughs> well, for... Dennis, how in the world did you happen to swallow one of your girl's earrings? I was whispering something to her, and I got too confidential. <laughs> Oh. Well, that could happen. But only to him. You said it. Anyway, don't worry, Dennis. You and your girl will make up. Oh, yeah? As soon as I get my bicycle back, I'm going to give her the air. Well, I... I don't blame you. I sold over 8,000 magazines to get that bicycle. It's mine. <laughs> all right, all right. Forget about your girl and your bicycle. And change the subject. Say, Dennis, did you have a good time at my Christmas party? Yeah, but gee, the turkey sure made me thirsty. Hmm. <laughs> mm, it was.
was a little salty, but you had fun, though, didn't you, Dennis? You certainly met a lot of celebrities. What do you mean, celebrities? I mean movie stars. Ginger Rogers was there, wasn't she? Ginger Rogers' car broke down and she stopped in to use your telephone. Whoever walks in that front door is a guest. <laughs> Whether it's Ginger or Moivin. <laughs> and there were other stars there, too. Oh, say, Don, did you read any notices about my party in the society pages? I imagine all the papers covered it, huh? Mm, no, Jack, I looked, but I didn't see a word about your party. Oh. Oh, you didn't, huh? Oh, I saw a swell right up, Jack. Where, where? Who, who, who? Who did it? Where, what, where, where? Where, 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 where did you see a write up? In the downtown shopping news. Oh. Oh. I thought you'd like to read it, so I clipped it out. Oh. Get a load of this, fellas. Jack Benny's Christmas party last Thursday was one of the outstanding events of the Beverly Hills social season. Well. Among those present were Rodney Dangerfield, the cowboy star. Barney Dean, Stella Buggenhaven. <laughs> That's uh, Rodney's leading lady, remember? Yeah. And your reporter, Scoop Scoopsy. Good old Scoop. Uh, go on, Mary. A delicious ham hocks a la duster were enjoyed by all. <laughs> ham hocks? Quiet. Uh, go ahead, Mary. <laughs> and, and the highlight of the evening was when Miss Ginger Rogers stopped in to use the telephone. I'll never forget the look on Scoop's face. After dinner, the guests retired to Mr. Benny's rumpus room, which was tastefully decorated with holly, mistletoe, and a huge bag. That was the present Mr. Billingsley gave me. <laughs> Boy, am I going to have flowers. <laughs> now, what, uh, what else does it say, Mary? Uh, the party broke up around 10 p.m. when the ace of spades fell out of Barney Dean's sleeve. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought Rodney was going to shoot him. Uh, that was a lovely notice, Mary. Well, Dennis, uh, give it to me, Mary. I'll send it to my father. He thinks I'm cheap. Uh, well, uh, well, Dennis, it's time for a song, so how about it? Say, I thought Mr. Dangerfield did take a shot at him. Dennis, we won't discuss those things now. Uh, let's have your song. Okay. Hold it. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? A happy new year, you I wish, and season's greetings so delish. I hope your days are bright and sunny. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome, honey. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Sing, Dennis. I must call up Barney and see if he needs another transfusion. <laughs> that was Who Call, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, that was swell. By the way, kid, before I forget it, I want to thank you for that lovely Christmas present you sent me. Shaving cream is one thing I can always use. Yes, sir. That wasn't shaving cream, Mr. Benny. That was a tube of anchovy paste. <laughs> oh, anchovy paste. Hmm. I was wondering why it didn't lather. Huh? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Hmm, the cat kept licking my face all morning. <laughs> That should have tipped me off right there. Oh, well. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hiya, fellas. Well, tomorrow's the big night. You got your reservation in, Jackson? What reservation? You know, me and the boys. We're opening downtown at the Biltmore Bowl. Oh, yes, that's right. Hmm, Wilshire Bowl, Biltmore Bowl. Well, you and your orchestra have been in more bowls than a pair of chopsticks. <laughs> hey! Yeah, that's all right. I'm going to pull that tomorrow night. Can I have that gag, Jackson? It's yours for two bucks, Bill. That's what I paid for it. <laughs> I'll be glad to get out from under, you know? <laughs> Say, Phil, what kind of a show have you got lined up for the opening? Ah, it's terrific. First, we're going to play some straight band numbers, then sing a lot of novelty songs, and then Charlie Bagby's going to do a soft shoe dance. <laughs> uh, Bagby, your piano player? Does he dance? No, but we got to get him up. That stool needs painting. <laughs> Oh, oh, and then on the late show, Frankie, my guitar player, is going to get up and do some acrobatic tricks. Look, Phil, on the late show, if Frankie just gets up, I'll give him a hand. Believe me. <laughs> and don't tell us any more. You'll spoil it. Huh? Say, Phil, you're opening going to be formal. Do I have to dress? Well, you ought to wear something. <laughs> <laughs> Always an answer. That Harris is a clip. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
a clip. <laughs> Harris is a clip. What a, <laughs> a character. <laughs> Say, Phil, shall we, tell... <laughs> oh. shall we tell Jack the surprise we got cooked up for the opening? Yeah, Jackson, Mary and me are going to do a cute little number called How About You? You know, it's the one that Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland sing in their new picture. Hey, that ought to be good. And listen, if you want another great <laughs> idea, how about... Oh, this is terrific. How about in the second chorus, if I pick up my violin and See play... See what I told you, Phil? <laughs> Listen, Mary, it's Phil's opening, and if he wants me to play a violin solo, that's his business. Eh, Phil Z? Them ham hocks I ate, but the violin is over my dead body. <laughs> all right, all right. Say, Phil, why don't you and Mary try out that song for us tonight? All right, come on, Mary. Let's show them how it goes. Okay. All right, go ahead. But if you hear a violin in the second chorus, don't be surprised. Go ahead. Let's have the song. Wait a minute. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. What do you want? I was just wondering, boss, can I have tomorrow night off on account of New Year's Eve? Rochester, New Year's Eve isn't until Wednesday night. Well, I want to let my hair down and it takes me two days to drink the curl out of it. Now, Rochester, let me make one thing clear. You're getting New Year's off Eve. You're getting New Year's Eve off, and that's all. And furthermore, I want you to be back to work at 9 a.m. the next morning. 9 a.m.? Yes, 9 a.m. Okay. If I ain't in the kitchen, look in the rose bushes. <laughs> I'm not gonna hunt for you. Now look, Rochester, there are a lot of things you can do on New Year's Eve besides drinking. You can throw confetti. Uh-huh. And you can blow horns. Uh-huh. And break balloons. Uh-huh. And when midnight comes and the old year passes out... I wanna go with it! <laughs> Rochester, believe me, I know what I'm talking about. You'll feel much better the next day if you stick to ginger ale like I do. Okay, you're the boss. You mean you're going to stick to ginger ale? No, just okay, you're the boss. <laughs> well, I don't care what you do, but I want to see you 9 o'clock the following morning on the job. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I forgot to thank you for that beautiful Christmas present you gave me. That's all right, Rochester. I always wanted a fountain pen. That's good. Now that I got that bottle of ink, I'm going to buy one. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. So long, Rochester. So long. So hard to figure out what to buy him. He has everything. Now, where were we? Well, Mary and me are going to give out with that song. Oh, yes, go ahead. Remember what I said about the second chorus. Sing, my little chickadees. My writers are working for W.C. Fields now. I like New York in June. How about you? I like the Gershwin tune. How about you? I love a fireside when a storm is due. I like the potato chips, moonlight, and motor trips. How about you? I'm mad about good books. Can't get my fill. And Robert Taylor's look gives me a thrill. Holding hands in a movie show when all the lights are low. May, May not be, be new, new, but I like it. How about you? I like Fred Allen's jokes. Yeah, to a degree. I love the common folks. That was How About You from the MGM picture Babes on Broadway, sung by Mickey Harris and Judy Livingston. <laughs> with violin hot licks by Jivan Jackie Benny. <laughs> you see, that fiddle bit in there really helped the number, didn't it, Mary? Didn't it, Phil? Didn't it, Don? <laughs> didn't it, Dennis? Who, me? Thanks. <laughs> and now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as is our custom at this time of year, Tonight, we are going to present our annual New Year's play entitled, The New Tenant, or Goodbye 41, Hello 42. 
Now, once again, I will play the part of... Say, the... Mr. Benny, every year you do one of these plays and I don't understand them. Well, you see, Dennis, these little sketches we do at the close of each year are not so much plays as they are allegorical fantasies. Oh. See, they, um... <laughs> You see, they deal with the abstract and the uh, esoteric rather than with the prosaic. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> uh, do you understand, Dennis? Give me that again, and if my face lights up, stop. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Now, now, look, uh, look, kid. Uh, ladies and These gentlemen, we do the while Jack is explaining here. tonight's play to I'm Dennis, play to let me tell you about Jell-O with its new locked-in process. Tires, such as we often do in most Jell-O is not only economical and easy to make, fantasy. but comes in six fantasy. delicious flavors. And they're Strawberry, and they're raspberry, and they're raspberry, cherry, orange, and lemon, ones, and lime. I thank you. But listen to the thought behind it. So remember, it's nothing but abstract symbolism. Have you got it, Dennis? Yes, sir. Rub a little on me, will you, kid? <laughs> Phil, you've got an important role. You're going to be Uncle Sam, so study it. Now, in our sketch tonight, I will play the part of the old year, 1941, who has been living in a big boarding house called the United States, run by Uncle Sam and his wife, Columbia. Mary, you're going to be Columbia, and you have 48 children, one for each state in the Union. 48 children? Holy smoke. Well, you were born in 1776. Oh, well, that's not so bad, then. Of course. <laughs> and, oh, yes, you have some adopted kids, too, like Puerto Rico, Hawaii, the Philippines, and so on. And now for our play. As the curtain rises, it is almost midnight of December 31st. And old man 1941 is up in his room, packing his bags and ready to make his exit. Curtain. Music. Oh, Columbia. Columbia, will you come up here, please? What do you want, 41? Give me a hand with this packing, will you? Got to get out of here before midnight and make room for the new tenant. Oh, yes, little 42 will be here any minute. Boy, am I a wreck. I'm glad I'm not a leap here. I couldn't stand another day. <laughs> You're telling me. You didn't have starch in your beard. You topple right over. I do look a little like a tripod. <laughs> I can go along with a gag. <laughs> Hey, uh, where's Sam? I'm him. Old place? You know, he's in day. He sure has. I like the way all your kids have pitched in and helped him, too. Here comes one of your boys now. Yeah, that's my fattest one. Hello, Texas. Hello, old timer. Hi, Ma. <laughs> my, my, look at the size of that boy. Yeah, he's getting a little plump around El Paso. <laughs> His Galveston could stand a little reducing, too. Right? <laughs> Fine boy, though. Say, uh, Ma, have you seen Pa around? I got some new airfields I want to show him. Oh, he's out in the yard somewhere, and he's madder than a hornet. I'll go look for him. See you later, Mom. You know, Columbia, I don't blame Sam for being so riled up. You mean about our little adopted daughter, Lulu? Yep, Lulu. Burns me up just thinking of it. There she was on a Sunday morning out in the yard picking pineapples, minding her own business, when a swarm of them dern yellow jackets flew in and stung her right in the back. That was a low-down trick if I ever heard of one. Well, she got plenty of flip there now. Let them come back. <laughs> hey, Columbia. <laughs> Columbia, hand me some of that swing music, will you? Might as well pack that and take it along with me. Here you are. Thanks. Hot shut wrong, turn down the real wrong. In a brawl, a brawl, let's do it. Boy, am I sick of that. Well, I'll just pack it in here in my grip. You might as well take all these strikes and arguments with you, too. Yep, you won't be needing them for a while. No, sheree. Hey, old timer, come over here by the window. Look. <laughs> well, I'll be darned, there's that mad dog Adolf. <laughs> Look at that bear chasing him. <laughs> Is that a Russian bear? It ain't Carmichael. <laughs> Look at him go. 
Oh, shut up, Benito. Who cares about you? <laughs> well, you gotta be out of here before long. What time is it, Columbia? About three minutes to twelve. Hmm. I better get finished up here. Don't go, them double crossers. I'll get even with them if it's the last thing I do. Here comes Sam now. Hello, Uncle Sam. Ain't you gone yet? Nope, got about two more minutes. Now, calm down, Sam. Don't get excited. Well, it's about time I got excited. When I think of what they're doing to my boy, Manila. Well, I don't blame you. I'm going to kick the teeth out of them yellow devils. That's about all there is to them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Sam. Well, Sam, I'll be leaving you pretty soon. Doggone, look at that clock. Just got my duds together in time. Hmm, that's the first stroke 12. Wonder what's keeping the new tenant. Little fella should be here by now. Don't worry, he'll show up. Now, here's a little tip for you, Sam. Just keep your shirt on, but your sleeves rolled up. Everything will be all right. Well, when I think of what they did to Lou... Take it easy now. Take it easy. Hmm, time's a fleeting. I can't leave till that little shaver gets here. That must be him now. Yeah. Come in. Well. Hello, young fella. You the little new year? This ain't a sarong I'm wearing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> You're gonna need a sense of humor, kid. Come on in. Want to meet Uncle Sam and his wife, Columbia. Glad to know you, folks. Hello, Sonny. Hiya, Bob. Make yourself to home. Well, son, I hope you brought some good things with you. You like staying in this house. It's the finest home on the block. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You better be moving along, old-timer. I've got work to do. Yep. Might as well be moseying along. Before I go, give a little advice. Take good care of here. Head when he wants to. He don't fly off the handle. Damn gall, darn pesky. See what... Take care of his friends and good neighbors to that Dutch uncle. Good to me, old t and Look, they have to put out there in the house once. See that that front gate is... Oh, I forget. Uncle Sam's got a nephew named Franklin that's taken mighty good care of the old boy. Ain't he, Sam? You're a darn tootin'. So keep an eye on him, son, and give him all the help you can. Franklin, huh? Well, I'll write that down. And as long as you're writing down names, here's another one for you. Put down Winston. Winston? Yep. Franklin and Winston. What are these two fellows' last names? <laughs> Ain't necessary, son. Everybody knows them. Anyone else? Well, let's see. You can put down Chung Kai Shek. Nice fella. Believe me, he's just as tough as he is to pronounce. And oh, there's a lot more of them, but Sam will give you the names later. Well, gotta be leaving. So long, Sam. So long, old timer. Here we go. So long, 41. So long, Columbia. Keep them flying. <laughs>